So here's today's question. How do you waterproof a curbless shower in a basement bathroom? If you watched our prior videos in this series, we showed you how to build up the curbless shower pan using a four to one mud mix. The next step after that is to waterproof it. So we ended up using a liquid waterproofing membrane made by KBRS. And in today's video, we're gonna show you some tips on how to do that. Okay, so to waterproof this shower, all the cement board and our channel drain, we're gonna use the KBRS liquid waterproofing membrane. It's basically just a liquid membrane you apply with a brush and a roller. And it comes with this mesh that we're gonna seal all the seams of the concrete board, the corners, and all around the edging of the shower floor. So first thing is I would pre-cut all my pieces so that you're not fooling around with this once you start applying the membrane. Yeah, just basically get these pre-cut. Okay, so first thing, get all this. If you're using Wonderboard, take all this, this tape off of here. I don't know why, why they do that, but you want to get all that paper off of there. Okay, so you do want to just wipe up any dust or anything off of your shower pan. You don't want to saturate it with water, but you do want to wipe everything down a little bit with a damp rag or a damp sponge. And we'll open this up and stir this up a little bit. Okay, then with a four inch brush, we're gonna go ahead and do these corners first. So apply a generous amount on the corners here. fold it just make sure you have sealant underneath it when you fold it so you just want to try to make this as tight as possible just pushing the brush in and adhering that mesh on there it doesn't really matter which way you fold it you can fold it on the wall or you can fold it on the, the pan side but just try to keep everything tight Make the tiling easier. So you just want to try to keep this half and half. Let's find that metal up. Put some sealant right there. Fold that up. Now I do have a pretty decent sized gap here on my cement board. And technically I should have probably more of that in a little bit more, but we'll get the coverage on it anyways. So then we'll go ahead and put our back mesh and bond it to the flange. So we're just getting it to attach to the flange and trying to get like a two inch overlap on either side.
And I don't wipe anything out of this drain because you might be able to see that at some point. Okay, on this outside corner, we'll, we'll get all this foam out of here that we had for the underlayment. outside corner here and this is a pretty critical area I would definitely because it's, since it's a curveless shower um, you want to make sure it is sealed around either side here We're going to do this in a couple parts here in order to get this to fold around. I would definitely be generous with around that corner. So as you can see here, we continue to smooth out the liquid waterproofing that's going over the fleece. What's important here is you'll see Steve is smoothing out any wrinkles in the fleece. And you definitely want to do that because it could adversely affect the wrinkles that is could adversely affect your tiling. So here we're just making a slice in the fleece. Sometimes it pulls the fleece from, from the wall, but don't get frustrated by that. As you can see, it happened to Steve there. Just continue to move forward. And the reason why we cut that slit in the fleece, and we're smoothing it out again, but the reason why we cut that is the fleece roll, will roll over the additional waterproofing that we put in the corner there, the additional fleece that we have in the, in the corner. So just know that additional waterproofing in the corner, not a big deal. Definitely want that. Same thing here, get rid of our
So again, we're applying waterproof, the liquid waterproofing to this outside wall that's outside the shower, that is, and we're adding our fleece to it. Again, you want to apply a copious amount of the liquid waterproofing, and we're just cutting a slit in the fleece so that it relieves that pressure point that's going around the outside corner, and it'll allow you to actually adhere the fleece without having additional wrinkles uh, down on the floor or on the wall. So again, you just need to make that slit there. And then you just apply additional waterproofing, and you can add another piece of fleece like we did on that other on the other wall there and you just cut a, a relief cut in it and it'll fold down so again you can actually do this dry you can kind of dry fit it unlike we did here and that way you don't have to have it be a little bit messier than the, than the job that we did. But nonetheless, that flap folds over into the shower and that it gives you extra waterproofing. So again, we're just applying our liquid waterproofing to the, to the back wall there. And then we'll apply our fleece. And as you can see here, you want the fleece to be evenly embedded in the cement board and the shower pan. So again, try to try to evenly split the difference between the cement board and the shower pan then you can embed it using the liquid waterproofing so now we're just applying the liquid waterproofing to the out to the inside corner that is inside the shower again embed your fleece evenly in that corner and it's nice as we said at the beginning to have these all pre-cut to help with the installation process. So again, as you're doing this, the biggest tip that we can give to you is apply generous amounts of the liquid waterproofing in, in the corner before you add the fleece. And then as you're adding the, the waterproofing over top of the fleece, to smooth out any wrinkles that form. And the reason why is, again, it could adversely affect your tile setting. So if you have a wrinkle in the fleece, it could bump out the tile. And that's why you want to constantly check, like Steve is doing here, any of the wrinkles and to smooth them out either with a paintbrush or even with a putty, a three-inch putty knife. That does come in handy, although we didn't use it on this particular project. So taking your time and, and really paying attention to how much liquid waterproofing you're adding is super important. Again, this is just our first coat and we did a second coat over top of all of this. But the most important thing to do here is you just completely embed the fleece on all the seams. So this is a horizontal seam between two adjacent cement boards. And we're just filling that in with the liquid waterproofing like we did in the corners and then adding the fleece over top of it and smoothing out the fleece itself. You'll have a little bit of a bump there in the center where the two boards meet, but that's not a big deal. Uh, and actually, you just want to try to smooth that out, as I said, as much as possible. And then this is the main wall. And we, I believe we have two, ver two horizontal sections there. So again, we're just going to fill that in with the liquid waterproofing and the corresponding fleece. It's pretty easy to do, and you can see there's just a pattern to it. You want to fill in all your corners and all your seams with the fleece, and then you can go over the screws, as we'll show you how to do here in a second. But again, there's a, there's a pattern to it, and it really is just working with the fleece first and then filling in everything else after that. Yeah, then I would just dab all your screw holes with a brush because the roller really isn't going to get into that too well and obviously a brush you can really get it in there and then on this corner bead i would put some mesh along this as well to protect it and keep it from any moisture that would be sucked in from the thin set because water will eventually get through the the grout joints at some point you can't rely on grout joints on your tile to you know create any type of waterproofing uh, but if water does get in below that then um, the thin set layer really likes to suck it in so you want to make sure that this metal is all waterproof at this level so that any moisture won't rot that out and a lot of it's corner beat stuff, it's really cheap metal, so it, it, you know, it doesn't take long for it to rust. 
So coat it with the waterproofing to ensure it doesn't do that. Same thing goes for any of the fleece that goes over top of those corner beads. Just fill in the over top of the corner bead with your liquid waterproofing, apply a generous amount, add your fleece, and smooth out the fleece like you did for the corners and the horizontal seams uh, for the shower. So like Steve said, this is really important to fill that in and to protect the, the corner bead so that it doesn't rust out if you used a metal corner bead. Now we're just filling in all the screw holes on this back wall using the paintbrush. And we're gonna, we actually decided to cut two little, pe two little square pieces here and to fill in even more with the fleece in the corner so that it slightly over, overlaps the linear drain there. So we're tying everything into the, the linear drain and ensuring a really nice layer of waterproofing in the corners. That's where you could potentially see a leak in this shower. Um, even though we built up the corners and it's obviously level and everything's draining toward the linear drain, it doesn't hurt to have additional waterproofing in the corner. And that buildup will in fact help you with the drainage into the linear into the linear drain. So there's really no worry about that extra buildup. And then just use a 3 8 inch nap roller to roll on additional liquid waterproofing onto the cement board. So again, in this case, we're doing it all in the vertical. You wanna, you wanna try as much as possible to roll it on vertically. Here, we're trying to avoid getting any of the waterproofing on the ceiling, so that's where, why we're rolling it on horizontally. But your first coat should all be in one direction. In this example, it should try to be all vertical. And then when you put your second coat on, you can go all horizontal. And the reason for that is to fill in any of the pores. So again, we're using a paintbrush to go around our mixing, our shower valve there and the mixing valve in the center of the shower. So anywhere where you have a mixing valve or little tiny spots where you have to fill in, you can use a paintbrush. I'm gonna also, just between this mud and the concrete floor outside, I'm actually just gonna put a piece of fabric there. And really, I, I guess I, just because of, since it's concrete here and the mud bed here, I just feel that this will isolate some cracking uh, potentially. Um, and just kind of reinforce the waterproofing on this part. Because if anything did like shrink on the concrete side and there becomes a gap, I could see that, that the, just the membrane itself, the liquid membrane not being enough to handle that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and, since this is a little bit rough, I'm just gonna brush in the whole shower floor and making sure that it gets a good bond. This um, waterproofing on the entire outside of the floor. This is also considered an isolation membrane, so this will kind of basically separate the concrete from the tile installation and provide a little bit of a little crack isolation from the from the concrete. So rather than using Detra or anything like that, we're just going to use this as an all-in-one deal. But I would definitely consider to go go ahead and seal against the drywall. Uh, put another corner piece here and go along the entire edge. Not all the entire room, but at least for the first three feet. I'm gonna go do this entire area here, but this is a critical area too. Um, and just, it's only because it's curbless. Any water that might migrate out of the shower for any reason, it's a good idea to have it sealed. So this is definitely just a pre preference thing that I like to do, but by no means absolutely necessary.
So we're filling in on the, on the main floor here. And as Steve stated, it's really important to add the fleece to the corners. This simply protects the wa any water that might leak out of the shower. So we're doing this on all of the walls within the bathroom. And the nice thing is this the liquid water move proofing membrane from KBRS is an isolation membrane, so it's serving the same purpose as a DITRA product or a DITRA heat, and it's helping to prevent your tiles from cracking when they're set on top of that concrete floor. So the inside corner here, we're adding fleece, just like we did inside the shower, and then we're going to fill in all of the the floor using the liquid waterproofing membrane. So again, we're just kind of filling in around the the pipe coming out of the floor for the toilet there you can use a paintbrush for that and rolling on the rest of the waterproofing using that 3 8 inch nap roller and working out of the bathroom in that direction so there you go that's how you waterproof a concrete curbless shower our biggest tip for a curbless shower is to ensure that the entire bathroom floor is waterproofed and that's why we use the kbrs liquid waterproofing membrane over top the entire floor. Now in our next video, we're gonna give you tips on how to start the tiling process. So keep an eye out for that. In the meantime, if you are remodeling your bathroom and you want help, get our free guide right here. It's awesome. We show you how to plan a bathroom remodel in 10 days or less. Really great video tutorials. We walk you through a lot of different things step-by-step. Step. So you can get the guide right here. Check it out for yourself and we know that you'll love it. Thanks for watching today's video, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.